Thank you, John, and uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so, to start with, then, uh, I'm going to begin with uh, our wheat work uh, over the last few years. And wheat work um, is led by John Blake of ADAS uh, in conjunction with NIAB TAG and SRUC in Scotland, uh, all funded by HGCA, and there's also a site in Ireland which is funded and delivered by uh, Chuggers. So, I don't need to tell you after this year that uh, Septoritrisia is our number one foliar disease on wheat, so I make no apologies for starting there. And uh, we have four sites uh, where we test uh, products against Septoria triticae, two of them uh, in England, in Rosemont in Herefordshire, and uh, Niab Tag site down in Sutton Scotney in Hampshire, and then a site in Scotland and also the site in Ireland. And we have a limited amount of space within these trials in order to evaluate products, so we essentially can test um, around um, uh, eight products in terms of full dose response curve uh, in these trials. So I'll show you the data we've got from these sites for 2012 to begin with. And um, we have uh, five single active products and we prefer to test pr uh, products as single active ingredients where we can in order that we can understand the mo most about them. So two of those will be familiar with you, uh, Unite uh, as epoxiconazole and prothioconazole proline, um, sort of our standard azole products. And then we have our, uh, some of one of our new products, which is Fulpit um, Phoenix, uh, which we're testing in as a full dose response curve for the first time. And, uh, and just as a single dose, a single half rate dose, uh, we have uh, chlorothanolol, which provides us a bit of a comparison for uh, the Fulpit Phoenix treatment. And our final single active is uh, Intrex Fluxoperoxide, and we're testing here a straight SDHI fungicide. And it's very important I say at this point, and I'll try and remember to say it again during the presentation, that's not because the way we see SDHIs is being used as straights. Clearly, we see them being used in, in partnership with other products, but we are testing it here in order to understand the most we can about the, about the active ingredient. So as well as those five straights, we have three mixture products, our three SDHI azole products, uh, that are uh, the, the sort of the dominant products in terms of uh, new chemistry coming onto the market. We have Aviator, which is a mixture of Bixofen and Prothioconazole. We have Adexar, the mixture of Fluxoperoxide plus Epoxiconazole. And finally, Segurus, a mixture of Isopyrazam and Epoxiconazole. So, let's start by looking at our, our, some of our data, and I'll just run through the slides for you, uh, the format of the charts for you once, so that you're familiar with how they all work. Essentially, uh, on, the, on the lower axis, on the x-axis, uh, you have uh, dose as a proportion of the full label rate. So just to remind you, that's not litres a hectare or kilograms per hectare. That is dose as a proportion of the full label rate. On the, uh, the right-hand axis, on the, on the on, sorry, left-hand axis rather, on the y-axis, uh, we have uh, the level of disease uh, in the, it, for that particular treatment. Each of the uh, products is tried at quarter half, full and double doses, so that represents the data points on the charts, and then we plot a, a curve, a line through those data points. Now for the wheat slides, they're divided into two halves. On the left hand side, we have the single active treatment, single active products. On the right hand side, we have the mixtures. There's no importance to that, we just separate the lines out so you can see them a little bit more easily, but it's the same experiments that you're seeing on the two sides. Okay, so let's start with our Septori eradicant data, and we'll begin with our um, uh, standard azole treatments, the prothioconazole, the proline, and the ignite, the epoxiconazole, and you will note that those two lines are very, very close, um, so they're giving very, very similar levels of control. But one of the things I want to point out to you is the overall levels of control we're getting in terms of uh, eradicant control of Septoria. Even the best products at the double dose are only giving us about 50% control of Septoria. So the level of Septoria eradication we can actually achieve is very, very limited, and that's one of the reasons why in 2012 a lot of you were quite disappointed with the, uh, your Septoria control. It's actually very hard in a season like 2012 where we're getting constant infection, a lot of wet weather, delayed spraying to actually control Septoria when it's in a largely eradicant situation. But our Proline and, our, and Ignite provide our sort of our standards. Interestingly, if you look at the Phoenix line, which is the green line, now Phoenix obviously, Fulpet is largely a protectant material, 
And when we come to distinguish between protect and eradicate control in these trials, we can make a pretty good stab at it, but it, even in where we say it's eradicate, there will be a level of protection in there, and vice versa where we say it's protection. So don't be too thrown by that. Um, what we're getting there is some useful activity in terms of overall septoria control uh, from, the, uh, from the Phoenix. Now, this is the uh, straight uh, STHI line, the flux of peroxad, uh, the Imtrex, um, and you can see that's giving us a very, very good level of uh, eradicant activity against septoria. Um, so we can, again, deduce from that that the, the STHI there is in its own right giving us very useful control of, of eradication of septoria, and in fact, um, slightly better than the Azole standards. Moving on to the uh, right-hand chart, uh, then the, the, the three uh, SDHI or mixes divide up into uh, the two sort of that are leading the pack, which is the Aviator X Pro and the Adexar. Um, so they're doing a very, very similar job uh, in terms of their septoria eradication, and they're slightly superior to the Seguris, which, as you can see, um, is tails off. There's not much of a dose response there, um, so it's slightly weaker in terms of its eradicant activity. In terms of septoria protection, it's a slightly different story there, but the most important thing about the septoria protection is that if you look at the overall levels of control we're getting, you can see that rather than 50% control from these best products at, at the high dose, the double dose, uh, we're actually getting um, uh, really nearer to 80 to 85% control from these products at sort of full dose or the double dose. And again, I just want to stress the double dose is not a recommendation. We use that in order to plot the charts, but that's not something obviously you're going to be using commercially. So we can do a much better job of protection uh, than we can of eradication. And again, that's why prior to 2012, we'd seen some good levels of septoria control in the field because we were using products in a mainly protectant fashion in those drier seasons. So comparing our, again, our standards, our proline and our uh, Ignite, our Prothio and our Epoxiconazole, giving very, very similar levels of control. You really can't pull the two azoles apart at all. Again, the new product, the Phoenix, the Folpet, having you know, reasonably good activity. Bear in mind this is a product designed to be used in mixtures, not on its own, um, but nevertheless it's giving some useful activity against Septoria. And uh, very interestingly again, although we only had one point for the Bravo, um, a half dose, you can see just how effective a half dose of chlorophyll is still in a protected Septoria situation. So again, it reinforces the value of chlorophyll in septoria programs, the fact that actually at the half-dose point, it was better in terms of protection than either of the two um, Azole standards. Again, as you'd expect, the flux had the straight SDHI, giving very good level of septoria protection there, um, superior to, um, to any of the uh, single Azole, so the best of the single actives. Looking on the right-hand side, where we've got our three SDHI azole mixes, and again, that's a slightly different story to the eradicant one, in that there's very little difference between the three SDHI azole mixes in terms of their septoria protection. So the Seguris, the Aviator X Pro, the Adexar, you can see those three lines on the right-hand side, all very, very close together. They're all giving very good level of control and a very similar level of control. So we do take uh, some of these trials to yield, and um, uh, if we look at the yields uh, from the 2012 um, data series, uh, starting again on the uh, left-hand side, of course, with the yields, the charts are inverted. So now, instead of the lower the lines, the better, the higher the lines, the better, yields are going up in this direction. So if we start on the uh, left-hand side, you can see that, uh, again, as with the septoria control, there is really no difference between the prothioconazole, the proline, and the epoxyconazole, the ignite, in terms of their yield response. Very, very similar uh, lines. Uh, uh, again, the, uh, the Phoenix, the uh, Folpet, uh, giving us um, uh, a, a useful yield response there, reflecting the level of septoria control that we were getting. But once again, our Imtrex, uh, our, our straight flux of peroxad, uh, which gave us better septoria control, again, that's reflected through in yields. Now, some of you may be thinking those yield responses are not very exciting. Well, bear in mind two things. One, that these are single sprays, so we're not expecting to get the same yield response as we would from a full program. But also bear in mind in 2012 that yields were limited not often by disease control, but by the weather conditions and the lack of sunshine. So that's why the yield responses may not look particularly exciting. 
So, uh, moving on to the right-hand side where we've got our SDHI azole mixes. And again, this really reflects the levels of septoria control we were getting in 2012. So really nothing to choose between the uh, Aviator X Pro and the Adexar here. Very, very similar levels of yield, very similar responses. And here's our Sagiris, not giving us such good septoria eradication and not giving us such a good uh, yield response. The other thing to point out here is that although some of you looking at the Septoria Coas may have been thinking, actually, the, uh, the uh, Imtrex, the flux peroxide, looks in terms of Septoria control as good as, say, the Adexar, where we've got the benefits of the epoxiconyls in there as well, if you look at the yield responses, you can see that actually the uh, mixture products are continuing to improve in yield over and above we were getting from the straight. So that's one of the reasons, if you needed another reason, why um, you need to make sure and use these products sensibly. In other words, use them with the Azol part. Uh, not in any other way. Looking at data now over three seasons, so it gives a slightly wider spectrum of sites and of, of disease pressures. And again, the story is pretty similar. So here is protectant data. This is from 16 different um, uh, sets of, of trials. So there's a lot of data that's gone into this oversight uh, an over year mean. Um, again, absolutely nothing to choose between the two leading azoles, the, the Proline and the, and the Ignite, very much the same line there. And the rank order of the SDHI azole mixes is the same. Um, so really, um, our Aviator and our Adex are very, very similar performance here, and uh, the Sagiris just uh, drifting off a little bit there in terms of its uh, it protecting activity. But, but actually, the difference between those is quite small. And again, look at the performance of the half-dose Bravo treatment. We don't have a curve there, but that single point, you can see how that compares with the half-dose treatment of the Azoles. Uh, clearly, again, we're getting very good uh, Septora protection um, over the last three years. In terms of the erratic inactivity over three years, this is data from 10 trials. And again, the thing to point out is that um, even the best products at the double dose, double the label dose, still only giving us about sort of 50% reduction in disease. And that's about as best we can expect when we're using these things in an eradicant situation um, as a single spray. Not a lot of difference between the two azoles. Again, the lines for Proline Ignite um, are pretty, pretty comparable. And the Sagiris line is, again, is in the same sort of territory as uh, the uh, Proline Ignite. And once again, the two uh, 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 leading um, septor eradicants over the three years have been uh, the Av Aviator X Pro and uh, the Adexar. Now, we aren't just dealing with uh, septoria, unfortunately. We do have other diseases to tackle, uh, and uh, that very much includes the rusts. Um, last season, we saw uh, significant early season yellow rust epidemics. And essentially, that never stopped. That carried on right the way through to, to late in the season. So, and it wasn't just in varieties like Oakley. We saw problems in common, commonly grown varieties like Solstice, like Gallant, like Torch, like Viscount, and a number of other varieties which aren't named there. So it was a difficult year for yellow rust. Um, brown rust wise, we were expecting, this time last year, we were looking at mild autumn conditions, warm weather, brown rusting crops in the field. We were expecting to have problems in 2012. Then we had a wet spring, a cold spring, the brown rust went away. It came back eventually late in the season, but by that stage, most people had got on top of it, and we really only saw it in trials where we hadn't put fungicides on. So, 2012 wasn't a difficult year for control, but do bear in mind that about 55% of varieties on the recommended list now have ratings that are five or less for brown rust. So the risk is there, and the threat is there, uh, should the weather conditions be favourable for the disease. So let's have a look at our yellow rust data. And again, it's a similar sort of uh, uh, format in terms of the charts I'm going to show you. Um, so similar products uh, and similar layout of the, uh, uh, of the, of the uh, points and the lines. Um, when we put these treatments on in 2012, at the time of application, there was about 3% yellow rust established on leaf three at that stage. So the disease epidemic was very much uh, underway, but by no means out of control at that stage. So it was uh, a, an established infection we were treating. And the performance of the products does differ quite significantly on the yellow rust compared to what we saw on the septoria. First of all, looking at the um, straight azole products, um, our, our Proline and our um, Ignite, 
Uh, you can see there's now clear separation between the two azoles in terms of their performance, and the Ignite is clearly performing better in terms of ULRS control than um, the, sorry, the Proline line, which is uh, that one there. So there's our Ignite, there's our Proline. So the difference between the um, azole lines. Second thing to point out is that we had uh, the Strobium Comet um, in this particular series. And again, we don't recommend, obviously, Comet being used as a single active on its own. It's always going to be used in mixture, but we test it to understand what it's contributing to rust control. And you can see that that Comet line is actually pretty close to the Ignite line. So the Comet is giving us still very good, use, uh, very good control of uh, yellow rust uh, in wheat. The other line that's on that uh, left-hand side is the straight SDHI, the Imtrex, the flux peroxide, which again you can see is giving us yellow rust control. So the SDHIs are contributing to our yellow rust control, but it's not to the level, for example, of the uh, epoxiconazole, uh, which is down here. So it's giving useful control, but not at that, not at that level. On the right-hand side, again, we have our three SDHI azole mixtures. Um, and here, this, again, it's a slightly different story to what we saw in Septoria. And you will note that the two lines at the bottom that are giving us the best control and that are very close together are the Edexar and the Seguris. So they are the two epoxiconazole-based SDHI mixtures. So not surprisingly, with epoxiconazole itself doing a very good job, those two products are really doing an extremely good job of the yellow rust control. And the um, aviator, which is our prothiconazole uh, bixofen mixture, um, again, that is more similar to what we were seeing uh, from the, the prothiconazole, from the uh, azole component. The, we also had Brutus in that series. Brutus obviously is a mixture of epoxiconazole and metconazole, so it's an azole mix. And not surprisingly, with epoxiconazole in there, again, it's doing a pretty good job of the yellow rust control. So 2012 was a high-pressure season that really pulled the products apart in terms of their yellow rust activity. In terms of the um, uh, si situation over two years, 2011 was a slightly lower yellow rust pressure, and basically the products are much closer together if you look at the two-year picture. But the overall rank order of performance is relatively similar, and it's the epoxiconazole or the epoxiconazole-based SDHI mixtures that are leading the pack. Finally, on the wheat uh, brown rust, uh, you can see that, um, uh, first of all, again, we have a difference between the azoles with the pro line, the blue line, the light blue line, uh, clearly a drift from the epoxiconazole, so we know that epoxiconazole is the stronger of the two azoles on the brown rust. But actually, the SDHIs contribute a huge amount to brown rust control. You will see uh, that the straight... Uh, uh, Imtrex, the straight flux of peroxide, doing a very, very good job of the brown rust control, even without the azole in there, very similar to the, uh, to the epoxiconazole. And actually, all three of the SDHI azole mixes are very, very strong on brown rust and giving us very, very good control. As the heading there says, uh, we did have Phoenix in this series, and we've only got one trial, one year's data, so we can't really read a lot into that. But we didn't really get um, a significant uh, uh, yield, uh, a significant disease control response to the Phoenix in this particular trial. Now I'm going to move away now from the uh, single year picture to look at some of the data over time. One of the things that um, John Blake and Neil Paveley of ADEX have been doing is to look at how the performance of the azoles has changed in the fungicide performance trials since they were first <coughs> trialled in this series. Now the um, epoxiconazole, either as Opus or Ignite, has been in trial since 1995, so we have a lot of data to assess its performance from 1995 through to 2012. The prothiaconazole, as Proline, has only been in since 2001, so a slightly smaller number of years for that. And what uh, Jonathan and Neil have done is they have looked at how uh, the average level of control with, in this case, a half label rate in a protected situation, how that level of control has changed over time. So you can see that back in the uh, mid-90s with epoxiconazole, we were getting something like um, uh, 85, 90% control of septoria with a half label dose of epoxiconazole. Wind the clock forward to 2012, 
And for that same dose, the level of control, the level of protection we're getting has dropped to about 60%. So we can see a decline in performance from the epoxiconazole over that time. Similarly, with the prothioconazole, we were getting about 85% control, 90% control um, back in 2001, and that's declined to around about 60% control um, in 2012. If we look at the level of control at a full label rate, again, um, uh, it's a similar story, although the decline is slightly less steep. So from a full label rate, we were getting about 90% control of Septoria uh, with a full label rate of epoxiconazole in 1995, and that's now dropped down to about 70% um, in, in 2012. And again, it's a similar story uh, for the prothioconazole. So even at the full label rate, control has drifted downwards, but it's a little bit less steep uh, than it was at the half label rate. That's protecting activity. And one of the reasons why chlorothalonil, why Bravo is so important, is because if you look at the level of control with a half dose of Bravo, or chlorothalonil over that time, you can see that uh, there's actually no line there because there's no trend. It's really hovered around the 70% mark um, over the entire period. So there's no change there, no uh, real drift downwards, and that's why it's an important part of our septoria control strategy. Looking at um, eradicant activity, um, if we uh, again start with the half label rates, the story here is even uh, more dramatic perhaps. Uh, looking at epoxiconos on the left hand side, we were getting around 80% um, control of, uh, of septoria with a half label rate of, uh, um, of epoxiconos of opus uh, in uh, 1995. But come forward to 2012, we're down to about 40%. So we've lost about half that control over that period. And again, it's a similar story with prothioconazole dropping from in 2001 from around 80% control down to around 40%. Now, some of you will be looking at those charts and thinking, doesn't the prothioconazole line look steeper than that one? That's largely because um, the epoxiconazole line we've been able to plot right way back to 1995, um, whereas it, the prothioconazole line we can only plot back to 2001. And because we had these higher points here, uh, obviously if we plotted the epoxiconazole line for that, it would have been a bit steeper as well. So don't take too much notice of that. The main message is that um, overall, um, on the eradicant side, there is a steeper decline for both products than there is in the protectant situation. And even at full label rate... And this explains the level of control you were seeing from those earlier slides. Even at full label rate, you can see how steeply the control of uh, septoria, eradicant control of septoria, has declined over that time period for both of the azoles. And we're really looking at sort of 40% control now of, uh, compared to sort of 90% control back when the products were first put into into, uh, into use. And of course you know why that is. It's because we've had this change in the septoria population. We've had the shift in sensitivity. Uh, the isolates are becoming less and less sensitive now to the azole fungicide. And that's why we need to use them in mixtures with SDHIs or in programs with the multi-site protectant products. So some conclusions then from the, uh, from the winter wheat. Uh, on septoria, you know, I've just shown you, we've got this clear reduction in performance of the azoles over time. Uh, the STHIs are, are certainly helping us to maintain control, um, even in a difficult like, year like this year. And when you compare the different STHI products, the three leading products, there's no real difference in their septoria protection. They're doing a very, very similar job. But when it comes to eradication, um, there, are, there is some separation, and the Avator X-Pro and the Adexa, or indeed the uh, STHI component of the Adexa, the Imtrex, the Flux Peroxide, both of those really have the stronger eradicant activity compared to um, the uh, Seguris. Now, as I said, uh, some of you will notice the Imtrax giving very, very good control of septoria, but please do bear in mind the yields were not as good as the ADEX are, uh, and uh, therefore um, it's by no means in any way a sensible way to think about using the products. You've got to use the uh, mixtures uh, for um, the best uh, performance. Again, the message is very much, if you can avoid using the uh, products in an eradicate way for septoria, then you should. You should be looking at, at trying to uh, largely protect against the disease rather than eradicate. I know in 2012 you couldn't do a lot about that. The weather stopped you uh, from implementing that sort of a strategy. But the aim must be to keep on top of protection, not to be trying to eradicate. 
Uh, if you are using SDHIs, use them in mixture with azoles and use those multi-site products, the chlorothalonil and indeed the, uh, the Phoenix, the Folpet, uh, in the programs where you can um, in order to main, help maintain control. In terms of the rusts, it's clear that the SDHIs are adding to um, our rust activity. Uh, certainly in terms of brown rust, the SDHIs are very, very strong, giving very high levels of control. On the yellow rust, they're contributing as well, but actually there's still an awful lot of good control we're getting from things like epoxygonazole from the strobilin comet, the paraclostrobin, in terms of the yellow rust activity. Okay, that's wheat. Let's move on to barley. And again, the barley is a partnership between uh, ADAS, Nayab Tag, and the projects led by Fiona Burnett at SRUC, funded by HGCA, with, again with a site in Ireland that's funded and delivered by Chuggers. And uh, in 2012, we were investigating uh, a number of diseases, Rhynchosporium, net blotch, uh, brown rust, and the last one there, Ramularia. And again, we had a range of products, some single, sing, some single active products, uh, and and uh, once again, we had uh, Phoenix in there as a, as a, a first time, a first new, new to the trial series, just looking at its activity against Ramularia and against Rhynchosporium. Ignite and, and uh, Proline there as our sort of standard azole treatments, and our Comet, our Paraclostrobin in there, was in uh, some of the trials as well, again, as a standard single active. We also had the Imtrex, the fluxoperoxide, the straight SDHI in there, again for the first time to understand a bit about its performance. But the message is just the same as it is in wheat. It's not that we think SDHI should be used alone in barley. That's not the way they're going to be used. It's there for us to understand a bit more about um, its activity. And then, of course, we have the three main SDHI mixtures, uh, formulated mixtures, the Siltrex Pro, which is the mixture between Bixofen and Prothioconazole, uh, the Adexa, the same as in wheat, Fluxoperoxia plus Epoxyconazole, and finally Bontima. In this case, a mixture between Isopyrazam and not a triazole, but in, but in fact Suprodinol. So, in terms of our um, activity, this is a Rhynchosporium eradicant activity from 2012, um, and you will see, um, first of all, um, again, uh, Although uh, we think of Phoenix as a uh, protectant material, again, we can't really distinguish perfectly between er eradicant and protectant activity. And clearly, which is what's seeing is there's some useful activity from Phoenix against Rhynchosporium, around about 50% control, in fact, uh, from uh, that, or about 40% control from that uh, active. But not much dose response. It's pretty flat. We're getting some useful reduction, but not a strong dose response. Looking at the major azoles, the Ignite in the red line and the Proline in the... Uh, you won't be able to see the uh, Proline very well because it's more or less hidden behind this yellow line here. So our Proline is hiding behind there. There's our Ignite. And once again, not surprisingly, the Prothioconazole is coming out as the stronger of the two azoles in terms of its Rhynchosporium activity. Uh, and looking at the, the other products there, uh, you've got the uh, Bontima, uh, which again is doing a similar performance to the Proline in terms of its Rhynchosporin eradication. And the sort of two leading products really are the, uh, the Siltrex Pro, in particular the green line. Obviously it's got Proline in there and the SDHI, so giving very, very good control of Rhynco. Uh, and the Adexar line there, the yellow line, again, again doing a very similar performance to the, um, to the Proline. Now, sorry for this map. This one looks a bit like a London Underground map, um, but uh, bear with me as I go through it. You have got in your notes if you want to look at it later. This is three-year data for Rhynchosporum eradication. Uh, some of those products haven't actually been in all three years, but we're able to work out where they would fit from, from analysis of the data. So there's a few new ones being added compared to the last slide. Um, for example, we've got Fandango in here, which many of you will be fully familiar with, a mixture of prothioconazole with uh, strobilin in here. That's the dark line just there. Um, and um, there's uh, Comet, the blue line here, um, as a straight strobilin. So a few things to pull out from that slide. First of all, um, you can see that obviously both the Phoenix and the chlorothalonil, again, it says eradication, but in terms of rhynchosporin control, um, both those are contributing usefully, but it's a pretty flat uh, dose response uh, on the chart. If you look at the comet, again, the strobilin, uh, there have been concerns because the strobes have been around for so long in rhynchosporin, would we see any uh, fall off in performance? But actually the comet, the, the strobilin, is still giving us some useful control of uh, rhynchosporium there. 
Once again, obviously, the Proline standing out as the superior of the two Azoles, giving us better control than the Ignite. And if you look at the uh, SDHI Azole mixtures, um, here's our, our Bontima, again, similar performance to the, uh, to the Proline. Here's our uh, Adexa on our Siltrex Pro. Again, very, very similar levels of ring spore, and they are the two really the leading uh, uh, SDHIs. There is one other product on the map here, Seriax. Um, that's actually a mixture, effectively, of Dexar with, with Comet. So not surprisingly, it's giving a pretty good uh, performance um, compared to the Adexar. It's very sort of uh, similar performance. In terms of Brinkosporin protecting activity, again, it's uh, quite a complicated slide. Um, and again, you'll see uh, some useful activity from the, uh, the multi-site, from the Phoenix here. Uh, you will see a similar uh, trend in that uh, the Proline, obviously, is stronger of the two Azoles. Um, here's our uh, Ignite here. And again, you will see that um, we've got good performance here from the uh, Siltrex Pro, um, again, matched uh, really by the Seriax and indeed the Adexar. So those three um, SDHI products um, are doing a really, really good job in terms of the Rincosporium control. And indeed, Fandango um, on that chart and the previous one showing that the Proline uh, component of that, along with the, uh, uh, along with the Astrobalian, again, doing a very, very good job of Rincosporium protection. Moving on to Ramularia. Uh, again, it's a slightly different story here. Um, so this is just from one trial in 2012. Um, we did have Phoenix in the Ramilea trial, but really not a lot happening really in this particular instance, uh, not a lot of control coming from that. We know that from previous work, uh, Proline is very, very strong at ra against Ramilea. Again, we see that. Here's our uh, Proline line down here. It's a very high levels of control from the Proline and certainly um, much better than the uh, Ignite in terms of this particular disease. Not surprisingly, the Siltrex Pro, which has got the Prothioconazole, again, doing a very, very good job of, um, of Ramularia control. But in fact, all the SDHIs contribute very, very usefully to Ramularia control. Um, so here's our Adexar. You can see superior to the uh, Ignite because of the inclusion of the SDHI, and that's really uh, confirmed by the fact that the straight SDHI there, the Imtrex, Again, doing a very useful job against the Ramularia, also along with the, the Bontema, the isoparazam-based treatment. In terms of uh, net blotch, um, there, again, the SDHIs are um, a very useful addition to our net blotch control. Just one set of data from 2012, but essentially, they're all giving pretty good control, and they're all giving a high level of control here. Very difficult to separate out the products um, really clearly at that level, um, and, but obviously the, um, the uh, Proline based materials, uh, Proline again, um, ha have very strong on that, along with the uh, Adexar as well. Now we put this slide in because um, although it's not particularly high levels of disease, and it's not necessarily the way you might think about using the materials, but it is an interesting set of data from the three years in terms of mildew activity. We know that uh, on um, barley, Proline has maintained a useful level of mildew control, even after all this time of use, which is quite encouraging, and that's borne out by um, the uh, mildew performance here, uh, for the Proline rather, which is the red line here. Now it says mildew eradicant, but at the end of the day with eradication of mildew, um, essentially what we're looking at is, is application where the disease has already got going, um, so rather than sort of strictly eradicant. But um, you can see that the uh, Proline doing a good job still. Uh, torch, sproximine, which we know is a, a well-established uh, eradicant material for, for mildew, again, it's doing a good job. But we can also pull apart a little bit the three sort of leading what I call protectant mildewicides, the talius, the flexity, and the syphilimid. Uh, and in that particular situation where we've got established disease, it's clear that syphilimid of the three has the most activity uh, in dealing with established infections. <coughs> But, of course, most of the time we are looking at controlling mildew in a more protection fashion. So some conclusions, really, on uh, the um, fungicide performance data for the barley. On Rhynchosporium, we're seeing that Siltroex Pro uh, and Adexa are really giving us very good performance, very consistent performance over the three years in terms of their Rhynchosporium activity. The Proline, it's good to see, holding up very, very well in its Rhynchosporium control, and the data we've got from this year is very consistent with what we've seen from previous years. The Phoenix, well, we've only got one year's data. As I said already, we'd normally be using it in mixtures, but actually it is contributing usefully to our Rhynchosporium control. 
On Ramularia, not surprisingly, uh, because with the prothiaconazole content as well as the SDHI, the Sultrex Pro is really doing a very, very good job in terms of Ramularia control. The SDHIs do have inherently good activity, so the Imtrex, the Adexa, the, the one team are all showing useful activity. But do bear in mind, a bit like Septoria, Ramularia is very prone to developing resistance. It's resistant to the strobes, uh, and uh, there, is a, there is a risk of developing resistance to SDHIs. So again, it's vital that we think about using SDHIs there in sensible mixtures in order to, to maintain control of the disease. In terms of net blotch, um, well, both the Siltrex Pro, the Adexar, and actually not on that slide, but should be added, the Bontema, all three of those showing very good performance uh, on net blotch and consistent really with previous years. So all the SDHIs add very usefully to uh, net blotch activity uh, in terms of improving what can be achieved with the azole alone, particularly in the case of epoxiconazole. Proline obviously remaining uh, very effective. And uh, strobins too, certainly from the point of view of Comet, praclostrobin, which is the only strobin we tested recently, that is maintaining some useful activity against net blotch, despite the partial resistance that exists in net blotch to strobins, but certainly praclostrobin maintaining useful activity. On mildew, as I mentioned, really we're normally looking at using the protectants as a way of controlling uh, the disease in high-risk crops. But actually, you know, prothiaconazole, SDHIs, all got something useful to contribute to barley disease mildew control. Um, so they can be part of the, of the overall package. I haven't talked much about brown rust. We didn't gather any fresh data in 2012. It was quite a low brown rust pressure season. But we know from the past that the azoles, the, again, the SDHIs um, and the strobians, they're all giving us good, useful contributions to brown rust control. So I think really in terms of barley, uh, we have a good range of options for controlling uh, brown rust in barley. And I'd just like to thank uh, the fellow contributors to the work, John Blake at ADAS, Fiona Burnett, uh, SIUC, John Spink at Chuggers, and of course Paul Gosling at HGCA. Thank you, John.